Here we go. Konami sponsored YouTuber coming through. <laughs> Must be late. See you tomorrow. Uh, it's the holiday season. Maybe it's uh, coming tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think we're getting this. Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. It's been about a week since the Dark World Structure Deck released, and for some reason, I still don't seem to have received my official Konami package containing pre-release copies. Not exactly sure what's going on here. They must have just lost it. But in any case, I want to show off Dark World, so that's what I'm going to do. So here's the list. Strap yourself in because this one has a lot of moving pieces. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck just got a huge redesign, but it's still the number one place to go for a pack simulator, a card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. I personally use the site to post every 10 minute testing list and every Chalice Line monthly top cut entry. Give it a look at www.ygopr o d e c k dot com. With that, let's delve into Dark World. Dark World is a series of monsters that, more than any other game piece, are probably individually responsible for the creation of problem-solving card text. Most of them, when they're discarded from the hand of the graveyard by your card effect, special summon themselves, and if they're discarded from the hand of the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, special summon themselves, and get a little bonus effect as well. These effects range from Pearl's middling summon a banished monster to Silva's win the game. Historically, they were used sporadically throughout post goat format as a punishment for spirit reapering just a little too much than as a standalone deck from the release of their structure deck in 2011 until they were crept out of the format by 2014. Since then, they've only appeared as the FTK tool of choice in a firewall combo deck mid 2018. They're also an archetype that's near and dear to my own heart as little 2005 Joseph couldn't afford the ultras and secrets that made up the top decks, but could nag my mom until she bought me some rares off of MikeLoda.com. Good times. Anyway, since Dark World had a 2011 structure release, and Konami is in the process of remaking all their old crap from the first Obama administration, we're getting them again. A retrain of a retrain, you don't have to rub it in, Baudrillard. Thankfully, this new folio of fiends actually looks pretty impressive. The new rainbow is a searcher for any of the big boys, Genta is both a searcher for and extender with the Gates of Dark World, and the new fusion spell is a wonderful way to cut your opponent off of interactions very early into a combo. These three pieces, more access to Silva, more bodies on the board for Saruya, and less of a chance to stop you, enable a deep draw combo that hand loops your opponent for their entire grip, shuffling all but one of them to get around those pesky tier limits. Should you be stopped, you'll have to settle for Dweller, Appaloosa, and Dragon Overlord, which you might recognize is enough. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First and foremost, we are playing a huge swath of dangers. They not only synergize fantastically with the Dark Worlds, they also are great for the rank 8 pool we are looking to play. 3 Bigfoot, 3 Thunderbird, 2 Nessie, 1 apiece of Jackalope, Mothman, and Chupacabra. Historically, Mothman's been very powerful in Dark World. That's because even if you miss the danger activation, you can still activate the graveyard effect and cycle the Dark World, getting its effect. I just don't really like giving your opponent that option in tier format. It makes all of their cards haveness. After that, we've got the Dark World's three Rainbow Supreme Overlord of Dark World. This one can be special summoned from your graveyard by returning a level seven or lower Dark World you control to the hand. And if it's discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add a level five or higher Dark World monster from your deck to your hand. Its secret effect is that if it was discarded from your hand to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special a level four or lower Dark World from your deck or graveyard. After that, we've got three copies of Graffa Dragon Lord of Dark World. This can be specialed by returning a Dark World monster you control to the hand, except for Graffa. If it's discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, you get to destroy a card your opponent controls. That is mandatory and will trigger turn one, which is very funny. And its bonus effect is if it was discarded by an opponent's card effect, you get to look at a random card in your opponent's hand. And if it was a monster, a special summon it to your side of the field. We've got three copies of Snow on Light of Dark World. This card is mind numbing to read, but the short of it is if it's discarded from the hand of the graveyard by your card effect, you can add a Dark World card from your deck to your hand. And if it's discarded by your opponent's card effect, you can target a monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it in defense position. After that, we've got three Genta. Uh, this card can only be 
be special summoned once per turn, can be discarded to add a Gates of Dark World from your deck to your hand, not OPT, and if it's banished and you control a Dark World card, can be special summoned. We've got two Silva because that's really all we're going to need. Uh, this is a five star monster, which if discarded from the hand of the graveyard by a card effect, can be special summoned. And if it was discarded from your hand of the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, allows you to place two cards from your opponent's hand on the bottom of their deck in any order. Truly an unbelievably powerful effect that we will be making full use of. Now, of course, in order to trigger that effect, we need our opponent to cause us to discard a card, which is where Saluri Guru of Dark World comes in. If this is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, it can be special summoned to your opponent's field and defense position. And if it's special summoned by the effect of a Dark World card, your new controller will have to trigger an effect that causes your new opponent to discard a card e.g. you. After that, we have exactly one pearl, Hermit of Dark World. If this is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target a Dark World monster in your graveyard, special summon it to either field. Then, of course, if it was discarded by an opponent's card effect, you can also special summon a fiend monster that is banished or in your hand or your graveyard. After that, we've got three copies of the TCG exclusive Zalamander Catalyzer. This can be revealed alongside another fiend monster to special summon it and discard the other monster. And when a monster is destroyed by battle involving a fiend monster, while this is in the graveyard, you can put it back in your hand. Finally, we are on one copy of Zephyros the Elite. And now for the spells, three gates of Dark World. You can banish a fiend monster from the graveyard, discard a fiend monster, and draw a card. Two Dark World Accession. During the main phase, you can fusion summon a fiend monster from your extra deck by banishing materials on it from your field to graveyard. And if you're fusion summoning a Dark World, you can also discard monsters as material. During the main phase, if it is in your graveyard, you can add it to your hand, then discard a Dark World, one a piece of Dark World Archives and Dark World Puppetry. Puppetry is a banish spell we are playing specifically for tier, and library is just a way to pitch cards for almost no reason. It allows you to discard a Dark World monster and cause your Dark World monsters to gain attack equal to the level the discarded monster had in the hand until the end of the turn, and it allows you to trade in if you discard for another reason. Finally, we're on one copy of Dark World Brainwashing. I like this as part of a long advantage loop. When your opponent activates a monster effect, if you have three or more cards in your hand, which you almost always will by careful use of your rainbow and grapha. Uh, you can target a Dark World monster on the field, return it to the hand, and if you do, the activated effect becomes your opponent randomly discards a card. Speaking of cards that do that, we're on two Grapha Dragon Overlord of Dark World. When your opponent activates a monster effect or a normal spell trap card while you have a card in your hand, you can activate this effect. The activated effect becomes your opponent discards a card, and that's a hard once per turn. If this fusion summon card of its own control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can special summon a Grapha that is banished during your graveyard, then everyone who has a hand discards a card. After that, we've got a Zeus, a Hope Harbinger, a Coach King Gigant Trainer. This is both the way that you are going to be winning in time and also, like, super pot of greed. We've got Baguska, of course, alongside Abyss Dweller and Dugaris the Timeless. We have really easy access to rank fours by way of Genta, and for that reason, against Fluanderese, we can make Baguska. Against Tier Limit, we can make Dweller, and if we're just trying to combo off, Dugaris is fantastic. We've got Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, Surya Skulldred, Apollosa, Nightmare Unicorn, Security Dragon, which is critical in getting a Saluri into play twice, a Muckraker from the Underworld, and one IP Mascarena. In the side, we've got a bunch of cards for going second. Lava Golem, Dino Wrestler, Pankratop, uh, for the blind, Harpy's Feather Duster and Cosmic alongside evenly matched for back row, card destruction if you're not playing against tier limit, and three copies of Skill Drain because if you are forced to go first, we can actually play pretty nicely under this card. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Bestial Dragon Link, and I'm going to be honest with you, there is no way of knowing if our hand is even remotely good until we see how our dangers pan out. We're going to begin with a copy of Bigfoot. That Bigfoot is going to trigger the effect of the Accession, which allows us to pitch a Snow to the Graveyard, and then afterwards we're going to go for an Archives. We'll activate Accession again, sending a copy of Rainbow and a Grapha to the Graveyard so we can make Overdragon, and then we're going to trigger the effects of our Dark Worlds in sequence, to which our opponent will chain a Druus Worm. That might come in handy a little bit later. We're going to get the Silva to our hand and pitch that, then we'll activate the effect of the Silva to summon itself back, and then of course add it back to the hand for the Grapha. We'll go for Genta here in order to grab the Gates of Dark World, we're going to activate the Gates of Dark World effect, banishing the Genta and pitching a copy of Silva, so both of those come to the field at the same time. Now we have enough material on our side of the field to make a format Saruya. We will do that, draw a bunch of cards, tuck a bunch back, set a copy of Puppetry, and then activate the effect of the Saruya to summon this copy of Rainbow. Afterwards, we'll return it to the hand for a Grapha, and then afterwards, we can fire the effect of the Chupacabra, pitching a copy of Thunderbird to summon itself and draw a card. From here, we can go ahead and activate Bigfoot. They do hit it, which means we are able to target the Druus Worm, and hopefully they do. Yes, they will activate the Druus Worm, allowing us to chain the effect of the Grapha and and pitch the last card in our hand, which is a rainbow, allowing us to add a Silva and summon to our opponent's side of the field the Saluri. We'll trigger Saluri's effect, or rather our opponent will, allowing us to get the bonus effect of Silva, shuffling two cards back, before security dragoning it back to our hand, activating the effect of the archives in order to pitch it, summoning it to our opponent's side of the field once more, and triggering its effect in order to pitch Silva again. This is going to leave our opponent on literally zero cards in hand, and us with a three mat Apollosa, plus Saruya, plus Grapha Dragon Overlord of Dark World, plus L, plus Ratio, plus you lose.
Now, despite the fact that that first game looked incredibly explosive, this deck is not without its weaknesses, such as the case in game two when we are playing against Ishizu Nachuria. Our opponents going first are going to begin with a Vernasilf in order to bin a copy of Revival Golem and summon back the Mole Cricket. They're going to chain the effect of the Mole Cricket to the effect of the Revival Golem in the graveyard in order to summon a Camillus. Then on a new chain, they're going to activate Camillus to send what else? A copy of Sacred Tree to the graveyard. They're going to activate Sacred Tree for a blessing, then fire off a blessing, bringing back the Mole Cricket, and then performing a Synchro Summon. Oh, shoot. Okay, we might still be able to get that, but unfortunately our opponent came to beat tier, and that Abyss Dweller is going to make quick work of any Grafa shenanigans we had up our sleeve. We've drawn Dark World Accession, which is just a very easy negate out of the Naturia Beast. Maybe they will forget that they can just do this infinitely? Yeah, Alright, let's just go to the next game. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing what else? A Shizu tier limit. Our hand's a little clunky, but we should be able to get it done. We're going to normal summon a snow, which never feels fantastic, but it allows us to activate archives, and then we'll put her back in the hand later in the turn anyway. We're going to go ahead and activate the effect of the rainbow, and then pitch a copy of Silva for the archive's second effect in order to summon it. Then we'll go for accession in order to make a graph of dragon overlord, and trigger the effect of the rainbow in order to grab from deck to hand another Silva. Afterwards, we're going to bounce for the rainbow, and bounce for the grapha, and bounce for the rainbow, and then we're going to activate accession in order to pitch this snow and grab a copy of Brainwashing. Now, this looks innocuous, but it's actually extremely powerful. Our opponent's going to draw. They're going to lead with a copy of Mudora. We're going to activate Brainwashing to change the effect to discard a card from our hand. We're going to bounce this copy of Rainbow. They do hit Accession, which is frustrating, but did you think this was once per turn? It is not. We're going to bounce this copy of Graffa, and this time they hit Silva, shuffling two cards from their hand back into the deck. They're going to go Scream and Rhino Heart, allowing them to chain block the activation of the Rhino Heart, but while they can send a whole bunch of cards to the graveyard, they cannot beat our Dark World puppetry. We're going to go ahead and get all of those suckers out of there, preventing them from future summoning and pitching a copy of rainbow in the process that's going to allow us to grab a grapha and our opponent's going to concede so it's time for game two and we did draw lava golem we might be able to do this our opponent's going to begin with a copy of terraforming that's going to grab them a pelerino they're going to activate mudora in hand pitching an agito and because now they know what deck we're on they have no fear in order to activate both agito and kelbeck and scream and rhino heart they're going to pitch a celiac for the rhino heart as we mill 10 and then they're going to activate the rhino heart and the Murley and the celiac in sequence they're going to grab from deck to hand a sheeran as well as fusion summon a kitkalos and then afterwards send a copy of Sheeran to the graveyard. They're going to trigger the Sheeran and the Mudora and the Keldo in sequence so that they can return the Suliak to deck and then add it off of the Kikolos activation. They're going to go for Garua here as well off of the Fusion Summon, grabbing the Suliak, then activating Pellerino to get a copy of Havness. They'll go for Sheeran, pitching the Havness, and then afterwards I'll trigger the effect of the Havness in order to make themselves a copy of Rukolos. From here they can go into Dark, triggering the effect of the Garua to draw a card and then bringing back this Pearl, which they can use to make an Elf, Normal Summon a Mudora, go into Abyss Dweller, set two, and pass. Pass. Woof. Okay, maybe they're going to go for Abyss Dweller and draw phase. In main phase, we contribute both of their other monsters for a Lava Golem and start firing off dangers. We win the Chupacabra roll. Bigfoot is at a 50-50, and we still hit it. We'll go for the last Bigfoot, lose the 33, and this is really all we can accomplish this turn. They're going to go for a Keldo here in order to activate the effect of the Pellerino and stop our Bigfoot from getting over the Abyss Dweller, which means we are forced to set one and pass. They draw for turn. It's a Mudora. That's not fantastic, but unfortunately, the Mudora engrave means they can activate Pellerino in order to pop the unused Celiac and activate its effect in order to grab a Rhino Heart. In main, they're going to go ahead and normal summon that copy of Rhino Heart and send from deck to graveyard any tier limit monster. They choose Havness and then activate Havness's effect to do the Kitkalos cycle all over again. They're going to activate Kitkalos here to grab a copy of Murley, then activate the effect of the Kitkalos in order to do the Yonky Sploinky, summoning the Murley and then milling eight cards off the effect of Kitkalos and Murley combined. Afterwards, they're going to activate the effect of the Kelbeck in graveyard, milling an additional five. And this has turned on our accession, but unfortunately, not only do they have Abyss Dweller at resolution, they're going to be able to activate an effect which we unfortunately have to graph a dragon over dragon and then get hit by a crime that we know that they have set frustrating but uh, you got to give them the space to misplay we'll take 35 3k and lethal so it's time for that all-important game three, and thankfully this time we're going first. We need a little bit of luck with this hand, but it should be all right. We're going to begin with a copy of Zalamander Catalyzer. We're going to pitch this rainbow in order to grab a Silva. Then we'll activate Thunderbird. Please, 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 please. Okay, hitting the Silva is fantastic. We'll reborn the Silva and draw a card off the Thunderbird, reborning for the uh, rainbow before activating Genta and firing off the Gates of Dark World number one. We're going to go for the Gates of Dark World, pitch the Silva, summon it and the Genta, and then afterwards we can do pretty much whatever we want. Uh, we're going to overlay for an Abyss Dweller just in case our opponent has something silly really early. We're we're gonna go for Gates of Dark World number two here, pitching a Genta in order to send a snow. And would you look at that? We drew the third one. We'll go for Gates of Dark World number three. What is a hard once per turn? We'll pitch this copy of Graffa, and then afterwards we can return the rainbow for the Graffa, make a copy of IP Mascarena, and return the Silva for Graffa as well. We're gonna go for the Dark World Archives here, activating its effect in order to send a copy of Rainbow to the graveyard and grab a second Silva. Then afterwards we'll pitch the Silva for the Archive's second effect in order to trade in. We'll go for the rainbow here and the Bigfoot. If we hit it, we will be able to whoo, do something real sexy. We'll special summon back the Silva, and here comes Coach King. 
Giant Trainer, and that's time in the round. We'll draw literally three cards off of this, and then afterwards we can continue extending our plays. This makes our dangers just so likely to hit. We're going to go for Rainbow into Graffa. We'll activate the Bigfoot. Thankfully, we do not hit the Bigfoot. We'll summon it, draw a card, go into Genta, and make ourselves a copy of Skulldred. We'll go for Skulldred's effect, and then afterwards we can fire off an accession in order to make a copy of Graffa over Dragon. From here, we can trigger the effect of the Graffa and the effect of the Saluri in sequence, then activate the effect of the Saluri on field, pitching a Silva. We'll summon back the Silva and shuffle two cards from our opponent's hand before going into Graffa and activating the effect of Saruya to summon another Silva, going into Graffa, allowing us to make Muckraker and Security Dragon. We're going to Security Dragon back that Saluri, then we're going to activate the Graveyard Effect of Accession to pitch the Saluri, summon it to our opponent's side of the field again, activate its effect in order to pitch Silva again, shuffle two cards from the hand again, and then go into a Graffa Dragon World of Dark World. Uh, we're going to fire off this puppet now so we can activate the effect of the Silva in Graveyard, return it for the Graffa, and make ourselves an Apollosa set one and pass. This is pretty good. We're going to go for Dweller in draw phase. Uh, they're going to go for a copy of Super Polymerization set. We will accession into another Dragon Overlord to contest the back row. Unfortunately, we can't actually even respond to it. We'll draw off return in standby. They're going to activate the effect of Super Polymerization to make Dragus Tepelia, but that's completely fine. We'll activate the graveyard effect of Big Graffa to go into Little Graffa, and then we'll activate the effect of the Little Graffa again to pop this copy of Dragus Tepelia. They're going to chain it, targeting Apollosa. We're going to chain Apollosa, targeting the Dragus Tepelia. Then we'll go for accession, popping a Silva, summoning it, switching our monsters to attack position, and getting in for well over lethal. Wow. So we're back with the deck, and it's good, but I don't want to overstate how good. I know it beat Tier Lament, but at this point, if you can't manage the occasional Tier W, you can't even consider yourself a part of the format in the first place. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, no! a lot of hand traps to this format. Thanks to Shaved Ashes and Veilers, Saruya almost always resolves, resulting in a bunch of fat Ws you just wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Two, it's actually very good at breaking boards. Graph is not just a combo piece, it's removal, and can put in a lot of work against established setups. And three, unlike most combo decks, this one has a resource loop, with Rainbow and Graffa netting you a few cards before you even commit to anything. And the cons. One, it is bricky. The choke points change from hand to hand, but sometimes you'll run into an extremely well-timed bestial and it will just end your turn. Two, you are a dark attribute graveyard focused deck vying for space in the same format as Tier Lament. All the cards that beat that deck, Abyss Dweller, Dimension Shifter, the Bestials, beat you as well, and worse. And three, your cards are dated. There's no Rhino Heart, for instance. Almost everything requires additional pieces to actually accomplish anything. All in all, it's a fine deck, but as a rogue strategy, losing to the exact same stuff as the meta decks do is never really where you want to be. Thanks so much for watching. A big shout out to all of my patrons, but specifically Elena Tincher, Alex Dominguez, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, BB Poison, Big Game Home Video, Brett Henry, Chaotic Meatball, Crispy, Daniel Liu, Dank Magician of Chaos, TJ Elephant, Going Down Swinging, Grant Curry, Indiana Petra, John Piet, Jordan Koontz, King Magic Ruler, Night Mary, Lilypod, Lockstone, Materiality, MBT Play Madolce, Megalith is Fake Goth, Mike Carlotti, NH6574, Rose Lapine, Sarah Rutledge, Solar Flare, Tolarian 101, Choice Has Bi Erasure is Gay, Wave Motion Ganon, and Wonder Waffle. I couldn't have done it without you.